Welcome to my video. Have you been interested in starting off making things in the Megamix engine, but programming scares you? Do you have ideas on weapons for your fan game, but can't figure out user event 14? Or do you just want to vent out your anger on Bubble Man with an accurately recreated version of the Razor Blade Typhoon from Terraria? Fucking Bubble Man! I can't fix your unbridled rage for that last one, but I'm here to at least get you started on the um, shooty shooty part. Let's make some weapons! So, where do we begin? We can't just type in make me a cool weapon into Game Maker and it. Uh, okay, okay. So, there are at least some weapons to start with that exist for stuff like make a good Mega Man level 3. But I wanted to point these out to begin with because a lot of people starting out with Mega Mix tend to. Uh, that to begin with. This isn't bad per se. But I'd personally like to try teaching the basics of making a weapon from scratch. Because when you have the foundation of how a weapon works, you can use these pre-existing weapons as a reference and analyze what exactly they do so you're not just blindly changing values and seeing what sticks. That, that is part of game design, but that, that's not the point. Also, by no means this is a comprehensive guide to Game Maker Studio 1.4. So if there's anything that doesn't quite click, the Yo-Yo Games documentation is always there to explain things to some degree. I might mix up terminology here and there, so feel free to leave a comment if there's any egregious mistake I've made in my wording of things. Also, if it wasn't already obvious, you'll need to have the Mega Mix engine and Game Maker Studio 1.4 set up for this. So first, let's create a new object. I'd highly suggest creating a new folder where all the weapons are, so it's not hiding in some random spot. And I'd suggest applying the naming conventions of the other weapons, which kind of looks like this. Opening up the new object, there's kind of a lot going on, but we can handle that. First and foremost, you want to set the parent of the object to PRT player projectile. This makes it so the object inherits from the behavior of PRT player projectile, basically setting it up to be a thing the player shoots in some way. This is what programmers called inheritance. Ooh, spooky. We don't want our weapon to be invisible, so it needs a sprite. That also has its own screen with a ton of parameters, but experimenting with the center of the object, image frames, and hitbox is part of the process. When you've got your sprite, drag it up here and BAM! Your weapon has a sprite now. So now that we've got that taken care of, we can start on- Did that- did that sound dramatic? Uh, does it look dramatic? I tried to make it- kind of dramatic because events are pretty important. Events are how Game Maker handle different scenarios. Uh, an object can handle, I, I guess. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, for example, create event. The create event runs code the instant an object is created. Simple enough. This event is basically used to set a bunch of properties about an object all at once when it spawns. Really quick before I get into the list of properties you'd usually set for weapons, I need to bring up event inherited. Event inherited is a function related to that whole parent inheritance thing I mentioned earlier, because it basically runs the code from the parent version of the event in your object. For the player projectile, this basically makes it so that the game recognizes it as one of Mega Man's weapons, and makes it so that you can't take damage from it, it can deal damage, makes it hurt enemies, etc, etc. You can look at it what exactly it does by clicking the parent button on the main object screen and opening up PRT player projectile itself. Okay, so now that that's covered, let's move on to the uh, important variables. Contact damage. How much damage the projectile deals in a single hit. The higher the damage, the more powerful. Pierces. Zero by default. When at zero, the projectile is removed when successfully hitting an enemy. When at 1, the projectile is removed if the enemy survived the hit, and 2 makes it so that the projectile isn't destroyed when successfully hitting an enemy. Penetrate, 0 by default. When penetrates at 0, the projectile will be reflected if an enemy is shielded. At 1, the projectile doesn't bounce off the enemy, but it won't damage it. And at 2, the projectile will hit despite the enemy being shielded. There is a 3, but it's a special case that I won't go over right now. And I know pierces and penetrate sound really similar, but hopefully this clears things up. Pierces handles when the projectile is destroyed, and penetrate handles shielded enemies. Attack delay. 
basically used for multi-hit weapons and paired with pierces equals 2. This determines the number of frames in between hits, so attack delay equals 8 will damage an enemy every 8 frames. Bullet limit cost. Okay, this one's kind of funny. It represents how much one instance of a weapon corresponds to how many you can shoot. By default, it's 1, so if you set up your weapon to have a limit of 3 on screen, you can only have 3 instances of that weapon on the screen. This is useful for things like weapons that split up, so if you have your weapon shooting smaller bullets that shouldn't affect the limit, this is kind of what you use to make it handle that. Block Collision. It's a true or false variable. Basically, it's just whether or not the projectile considers collision with solid objects. Is Solid. Kind of like Block Collision, though this time it's if the projectile itself is considered a solid object. It's very useful for platform type weapons like Item 1. Zero means it's not a solid object, one means it is a solid object, and two means it's a top solid, which means there's only collision on the top of it. Also, player projectiles, when solid, are only solid for the player. X-Speed, Y-Speed, and Grav. Horizontal velocity, vertical velocity, and vertical acceleration respectively. It seems like you'd want to set your initial values here, but hold off on that for now, because we're going to be talking about... Now you're probably wondering, what the heck is User Event 14? That doesn't seem like a concrete event name at all. And you'd be right, the hint's in the name. The way that Megamix engine was set up was in a manner that different user events would correspond to different actions that would happen to an entity that didn't exactly correspond to another game maker's studio event. Therefore, the user events were used as custom events to handle this dilemma. For user event 14, this is the code that is run within the Mega Man object when a specific weapon is equipped. To check if the player is actually shooting, you want to put to start with. It's a more complicated line of code than what's been shown so far, but to put it simply, this basically means if the shoot button was pressed and the player is able to shoot. So after checking if the player shoots successfully, it's time to actually create the projectile. In our if statement, we want to put something like this. That's a lot of code thrown at you all at once. What does it do? That's a good question. Let's split it up into pieces. This first part initializes a temporary variable that holds the weapon we're about to create, which is done using the fire weapon part. The fire weapon part is basically a fancier instance create function that sets a bunch of values to the bullet as it's being created much like the create event, but with a few extra adjustments. The parameters of the fire weapon function determine the horizontal and vertical offset of the weapon relative to Mega Man, the object Mega Man is shooting, yes, this can be a different object than the weapon object you're working with, consider break dash, how many instances can be on the screen, this is the limit we were talking about earlier with bullet limit cost, how much ammo the weapon uses when firing, what animation Mega Man plays when firing, based on a sprite sheet, and whether or not Mega Man stops on the ground when you fire. Kind of like how Metal Blade and other similar weapons stop you whenever you're shooting on the ground. Fire Weapon already does a lot of the heavy lifting when initializing the object, but there's a few other important values that we can set here as well. We want to make another if statement that checks just for our temporary variable B. This basically ensures that if the weapon didn't get fired for some reason, like, for example, if fire weapon set B to nothing because the player was out of ammo, it doesn't set values to a non-existent object. Within this check, we can use the format b.variableName to set values to our specific object. This is where we finally set stuff like the velocity of our object, because now we can factor in properties of the player shooting the object. Let's set the x speed of the object. If we want the object to move at a horizontal speed of let's say 5, we can do this by saying b.xspeed equals image x scale times 5. Image x scale is the horizontal scale of an object, and because this code is technically being run by Mega Man, we're basically making sure the object is moving in the direction he's facing, so it'd be 1 when he faces right, and negative 1 when he's facing left, because this scale is either 1 or negative 1 respectively. While we're at it, we can do the same thing with the object's x scale b.imageXscale equals imageXscale. 
You can also do this with the vertical component variables and image Y scale, but keep in mind that GameMaker handles negative Y components as up and positive Y components as down. So if you'd like to give your weapon a nice arcing motion, set the Y speed to be a negative number and set the gravity to be a positive number. We'll come back to that later, but as it currently stands, we've essentially created a perfectly fine uncharged Mega Buster clone. Now, all we need to do is make it so that you can select it in-game. Up until now, I've been showing examples of weapons with varying properties kind of willy-nilly, but if you were to try and boot up this weapon without any further work, you wouldn't be able to access it. This is where the elusive User Event 12 comes in. User Event 12 is a special user event reserved for a specific weapon-related function. Weapon Setup. When the game starts, it runs through all of the objects within the project for user to find 12 so it can set up the relevant weapon, and then, when the weapon is enabled in game, Mega Man can switch to it. Within User Event 12 is where you put the aforementioned weapon setup, which, the way you set it up, is that you put the name of the weapon, in all caps, the primary and secondary color of the weapon, which is the color Mega Man has when using the weapon, and the weapon icon sprite it uses. Once you've got this in, your weapon is basically ready to go. Quick tangent about weapon icons. If you look up how they're set up with the pre-existing weapons, you'll see they're split up in four frames, with the first one being the grayscale version you see in the pause menu, and the next two being white outlines of the different colors on the icon. This is because the second and third frames are colored during gameplay based on the primary and secondary color of the weapon. The fourth frame isn't recolored at all, just in case you want to shake it up a little, like Black Hole Bomb. You can define a color with Make Color RGB and input a value between 0 and 255 for the red, green, and blue parameters accordingly. But for palette consistency, Megamix Engine provides the lovely global.nes palette array where you can input an index based on this convenient chart. Okay, so now, finally, when you wait the two minutes for Megamix to boot up, go into a stage, there we go. Your very first weapon is available and ready to use. Good job! Yeah. However, we're not quite done yet. While a Buster clone is a very respectable first weapon, we do have the opportunity to mess around with a few more basic concepts before the video ends. Let's take a look. First thing out of the way after creating the step event, most of your weapons are going to have this as a baseline. Event Inherited inherits the behavior from the step code in PRT Player Projectile, kind of like what we did with the create event. And this if statement essentially checks whether or not the game is in a state where the projectile can update. The step code runs every frame an object is active, which lets us manipulate different properties of an object if we so desire. As a small example, we'll be making our object bouncy. Consider a projectile with gravity and block collision. Without any extra step code, your object is going to slide along the ground until it hits a wall, in which case it's going to do nothing, because it can't really do anything else unless an enemy just so happens to hit it or something. To fix that, you can add some conditional statements. There's some built-in variables for entities called xcall and ycall, which save the x-speed and y-speed of an object if they make a horizontal or vertical collision respectively. By checking if xcall is not equal to zero, you can run a code if the projectile collides with a wall. Checking if ycall is not equal to zero will run code if the projectile collides with a floor or ceiling. With this information, we can make our projectile bounce off walls, the floor, both the wall and the floor, make it bounce lower and lower each time, or if you're just looking for a weapon who doesn't like colliding with things in general, make it explode. Spontaneously. Finally, as a last touch, you can add sound effects to your weapon by using the play SFX function. Usually this is done when the weapon is shot, but you can also add a little spice by adding it when it collides with a wall or gets destroyed. That's about it for today. I wanted to go over what I would consider the bare essentials for weapon creation, since a lot of Mega Man's existing selection of artillery make use of these core concepts in some way. 
There's still a lot of ground to cover though. I haven't gone in depth about things like the rest of the user events, things you can do with timer variables, multi-directional weapons, shield weapons, homing weapons, the list goes on and on. I might make some more tutorials in the future covering these different things, though in the meantime I'd like to leave it up to you to experiment and study the different behaviors of existing objects in Mega Mix. Come up with some concepts, figure out how they'd work, I believe in you. If you'd like more support for the Mega Mix engine, and or are just looking for a cool Mega Man community to hang out in, I highly suggest joining the Make a Good Mega Man level Discord server, since uh, that's where this thing comes from. And a lot of people know their way around this kind of stuff. Links in the description. Also, I'd like to plug my own fan game server and the Mega Mix Engine Creation Jam server. Both of these places have dedicated channels for Mega Mix Engine support, and the latter hosts semi regular game jams using the Mega Mix Engine. The links for those are also in the description. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and happy coding!